Hi everyone, it's Guy Spear here. I wanted to do a video introduction to my um, semi-annual email update to people who wanted to stay in touch with me. And uh, so this month's email or this email has 11 sections. I hope you like all of them. I uh, start and end the email with the events of October 7th, which has taken up perhaps a share of your mind, it's taken up a share of my mind. And, um, but moving on from there, uh, I go on to kind of like two friendivist, activist, don't know what you'd call them exactly, situations that are in my portfolio. One is um, a short essay titled Avoiding the Energy, the California Energy Catastrophe in India, which relates to my investment in the India Energy Exchange and relates to a letter that I submitted to the Central Electricity Regulatory Commission of India, which um, I guess we can even look at. So there's the letter that I sent to the Central Regulatory Commission of India and uh, I kind of enjoyed writing it. And a friend also made a submission to the Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, uh, somebody called Niall McDowell, which you can read about um, and I should move down. So uh, uh, just going into the first section for a second, I did a, a write-up of N N Niall Ferguson's talk at the University of Zurich, and um, he feels like we're well into Cold War II, and Cold War II ha is different to Cold War I. Cold War I was Russia versus the Soviet Union with nuclear weapons, a uh, big conclusion that Niall Ferguson talks about is instead of mutual assured destruction, MAD, uh, he talks about mutually assured financial destruction, which he thinks is on the table potentially if the United States and China don't get their relationship right. And so uh, I wrote it up and I've given you a link there. And uh, yeah, we've talked about avoiding the global energy catastrophe in India. There's a photograph I included in the email of um, myself with the CEO of India Energy Exchange, Monish Pabrai, who I joined for the trip, Rohit Bajaj and Aparna Varg, uh, a couple of people from India Energy Exchange. They're an extraordinary business. Um, and the third section, I talk about something that is, I think many good investment ideas origin originate somewhere else. And this is an investment idea that I believe has originated with me, and I don't know if it'll work out, but I do get excited about the idea that Care Ratings might be the first ratings agency for a very long time that has come out and issued sovereign ratings. And it's not as if the developed economies of, say, Switzerland, Japan, um, United Kingdom, United States particularly need a sovereign rating from Care Ratings Indian Credit Rating Agency, but it might be that countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Indonesia, Philippines might look somewhere other than the United States to get their ratings, and I think that Care Ratings is a phenomenal candidate. And uh, there's a letter that I have not yet written to the, um, in this case it would be SEBI, in, in which I kind of put the case that uh, a, a proper developed uh, India would need to have its own domestically controlled credit rating agency, homegrown as opposed to the kind of ones that are controlled by companies like Moody's and Standard and Poor's. And that this is an important part of India's cultural projection of soft power. And it would be a shame if they didn't take advantage of that. And so um, it's a draft letter, hasn't been sent out yet. But I guess you know, I'm, I'm in part, I'm exposing this to my email subscribers because, you know, I think that this idea of working in public and you never know where somebody comes up with a good idea. So I have exposed it there in section three. And um, there's a photograph of me with a uh, business development executive, Dina Sharma, who works in the daily area for care ratings. Um, Fourth section is an article by me, short article uh, written about how to make your investing strategy reproducible. 
as you all know, I have a lot of interest in this idea of Aragodicity, and that has come up for me uh, through conversations with Luca Delana, who's based in Turin. I'm looking forward to meeting him soon. I did a podcast with him, and uh, the idea is, briefly, that in any uh, time or period, there's going to be something that looks extraordinarily successful and is going to beat whatever you're doing. But the very high likelihood is that it's not reproducible in the same way that somebody who's, there's always somebody winning at the roulette table. But uh, it's a different person every time. And if you try to be that person, you might be that person one in however many times, it would be a very small proportion. By contrast, if you're the dealer, or if you're the owner of the casino, every day there are people who win big against you, but they're different people. And over time, your strategy will work to extract money out of the people attending. So in investing, you want to kind of know, is your strategy look like more more like the uh, owner of the casino or more like a big roller who will win one time, but not often? I've kind of made a mealy mouth of that, but... Um, I enjoy this photograph that I find that uh, demonstrates the idea. It's on LinkedIn right now. And um, it's a valuable distinction, I think, that has helped me. Another valuable distinction that came up for me in relation to a friend is how to market when you hate humanity or marketing for introverts. Uh, I had a lot of fun writing the article for my friend Eitan Chitayat, who published it on his website, and it's there for you to read. Um, and then uh, I highlight some of my recent podcasts and my podcast channel, uh, some of my conversations, excerpts of my conversations with William Green. Uh, I actually wanted, and then we get to submissions that I receive in my email inbox from time to time from others that I love uh, to put up here in this email. I felt slightly bad of putting my content first, but my staff reminded me that people open the email to read my content. So but I like seeing other people's content up here. And so this is all obviously with permission and I have a write-up of the company that makes brakes for people like uh, Porsche and Ferrari. Uh, it's a company called Brembo based in Italy. And uh, I, you should know that Kelvin scored a perfect score on his SATs and went to Harvard undergraduate and I really enjoyed meeting him. Uh, Joanna Jin is moving to London. Last time I checked in with her, she was at Goldman Sachs. She's a graduate of Yale and did an internship with me. Uh, I haven't. I really enjoy my interactions with her. And I think she did a great write-up of Goldman Sachs acquisition and disposal of Green Sky. And so she had to get permission internally to actually mention the name of the company. So uh, uh, Pratiek on Manapuram Finance Cornelius Kick was also an intern of ours. And um, I'll just go to the very last one because I don't want to take too much of your time in this video. Uh, Jahangir Apu, uh, who's part of our community at ValueX and a former surgeon, has got a, an interesting VC fund, AIOT, and um, he writes a letter that he's allowed for me to share. And uh, one of my other interns, Sabrina Bergen, wrote a review of Bruce Usher, who's a classmate of mine, who wrote uh, his book is Investing in an Era of Climate Change, gave a really great overview of uh, investing in an era of climate change. So uh, you might enjoy that. Uh, and then, you know, in the book section, I think that this concept of lie machines written by uh, Philip Howard, who's a professor of internet studies at Oxford University, and the concept of computational propaganda, both uh, extremely valuable and important uh, concepts that I learned from his book that I enjoyed reading. And a lot of my other reading has been kind of related to uh, uh, what has been going on in Israel, Palestine, Gaza, Hamas, and um, the book that's helped me the most perhaps is this book by Dara Horn, who's a New Jersey-based writer. She's been there for five generations. Awesome woman, if uh, I may be so bold. And um, the title of the book is People Love Dead Jews. And uh, if, if before you judge the title, read some of the chapters and you'll see what she means. And it was an interesting take on um, 
some of the biases, I guess, that that exist in the world. Um, I wrote a section on uh, making sense of tragedy because I've had a lot of tragedy, uh, just not in my life, thankfully, but one step removed. And um, in one case, a classmate fell uh, a few couple of years ago in her apartment and became a quadriplegic. And uh, you can read the story here. And if you decide that you want to make a donation and help her, we've been raising money for her. It's pretty tough. Uh, quadriplegic means you can't move your arms or your legs. It's just a tough place to be. And I think that uh, one of the results of me helping her uh, is that I've become more grateful for my own life. So there's a, we have to take what we good we can. And I kind of write some of my thinking on it and I hope it's helpful. And another good friend of mine uh, suffered from brain cancer and died in the last six months and he was my age so you never know when our lives are going to be taken from us as the disaster in Israel also shows. Last two sections I'll record another video on this but I'm going to be doing a charity lunch uh, it's now will be my fourth one I think that one of the things that I didn't realize about hosting these charity lunches is that I get to meet some really interesting people and the person who's bid up to have lunch with me has thought about it and there's a specific benefit to them that they've thought through why they're going to benefit from that lunch. And what I didn't realize is that I benefit enormously because I get to really focus on and spend time with people that I might not otherwise have met. And so I learn every time and I'm looking forward to seeing that go up. And the beneficiary is going to be the same one as last year, which is an organization on which whose board I sit called UN Watch, which seeks to hold the United Nations to the terms of its original charter and uh, has had some success, but there's a long way to go. And in my the last section here, I just go back to the issue that has been on my mind more than anything else uh, for m many people. Uh, uh, what happened on October 7th in the south of Israel is worse than 9-11. Uh, I recorded a video that I hope you watch because I realize that, um, you know, there, there, there are some people who see this differently and I wanted to honor uh, everyone, uh, especially all the victims, if you like, and I understand that there are many innocent victims in Gaza who don't deserve the uh, extraordinarily difficult times that they are living through, along with, and very much close to my heart, is the families of close to 240 hostages where the Red Cross has still not visited them, and there are people who have not slept for a month or two now wondering where they're, for example, in one case, 10-month-old child, I have no idea how anybody in their right mind would think that the cause of Palestinian independence and freedom, which I'm fully supportive of, would be advanced by taking and kidnapping, or in other cases, they killed and beheaded babies. And uh, just to take you into an in a video that I recorded, um, all rational people understand that the best security for Israel and all people living in the region is for there to be prosperous people living there, and that includes prosperous Gaza. So I'm looking for a safe and secure and prosperous Gaza, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it's the best security for Israel. And uh, I go into that because there's been, it's been a difficult time, and I just want people to know that I feel like I see the uh, suffering on the other side and care about the suffering on the other side. Um, and there is a video which I cannot find the link to right now, but uh, I collected up my thoughts in a document that I update from time to time. Uh, just giving people uh, links to, it's got this, I put in this photograph or this uh, painting done by an Russian-Israeli artist, which I really, really liked. And if we go to the very bottom of this, I believe, so I don't know, maybe some of you will want to collect this up and see it. I uh, reference my uh, some a white paper that I wrote before on the Mediterranean co Coastal Highway. You can learn about that idea in the video here. That's um, a linked linked in the document if you like, and it's got uh, my thoughts, some of which have been just been expressed. But 
uh, and there is the update, or well, there is the um, uh, introduction to my uh, second half year email to subscribers. I hope you like it with thanks to Vanessa Harris who edited it and uh, looking forward to receiving your feedback. Thank you.